I'm Tidi Curie and today I want to show you how to set up a new game in RimWorld. It's not that difficult, but there are a couple of things that are quite good to know. So let's dive right in. We click on New Colony and then you've got four standard scenarios. You've got Crash Landed, where you start with three people. Obviously you crash land on the planet, you've got a couple of resources, you've got a couple of weapons, and then you start. Lost Tribe. It's a bit more difficult. You have five people. Yes, it's better to man manage your base because you just have more hands that just, you know, do things for you and work. But on the other hand, you have five people to feed instead of three. So getting food is a high priority here. Also, with a lost tribe, your research starts at the, like, at the beginning, basically. You have to research everything. You don't start with like, electricity, for example. So that makes it a bit more difficult because you have to spend more time on research. The rich explorer. You start with one person, a rich one, with lots of money, components, and a fancy late game weapon, the charge rifle. Random pets, I mean, that's that's usual really. It is difficult because the good thing about being the lost tribe with having five people to work in your colony, the rich explorer, you only have one. So easy to feed, right? But you have to build, you have to grow, you have to cook hunt at everything with that one person so here your, your highest priority should be getting more people quickly unless you want to complete the whole game just with one person and then there is naked brutality naked brutality once again you only have one person but here you are naked you don't have anything which is really really funny it is an extreme challenge and the game actually says it's unfair Kind of. I mean, it depends on the biome you start with. Here you see that I also have a custom scenario. You can just, you know, do that yourself. I made one to get more thrombos. That was before thrombos could actually um, be tamed with the tame inspiration. Because that just wasn't a thing then. So I made, I made a custom scenario where thrombos just pass by repeatedly. Per default, so vanilla RimWorld, you can just edit your scenario. You see here the scenario editor, you just click it, go to edit mode, and then you see what this is actually about. So you can change the title, the summary, the description. You can just make your very own scenario, really. But hey, if you say, I want to play Crash Landed, but I want to have five people, just like, just like the Lost Tribe, you can do that. Easy. Crypt of Sleep Sickness is a, is a thing here. If you just, you know, don't care for it, you can turn that off. You can also add parts and say, you know, cannot hunt, cannot mine, a force trait, they have to start naked, or a permanent game condition, for example. Then we have to go all the way down here, because they just, whatever you click in here, will just be added here. So the last one is sunblocked, for example. Or you can say, you know, I want a real challenge. I want a permanent toxic fallout. Okay, you can also just disable an incident, right? So if you absolutely hate, I don't know, alpha beavers, because, you know, the, the mouse is just here, you can do that. You know, just turn it off. If you hate malaria, for example, whatever you prefer, really. And then obviously people who have made or have created their custom scenarios, they can upload it to the workshop, you can download it and just, and just do that. For me, you see all the, well, not all of them, but quite a couple of the hot potato seasons. Okay, Crash Landed. That's the default one. The classic RimWorld experience. And then you get to choose your storyteller. There are also lots and lots of storytellers that you can download as a mod that just change the way the game is played. There's Cassandra Classic. Obviously, classic experience. There's Phoebe Chillax, which will give you a lot of time uh, in the start. I mean, it says a lot of time between disasters to build your colony. It seems that Phoebe Chillax, it is chill in the beginning. So you have a long, long time period where hardly anything happens. And then in between events, it's a long time where you can actually build up your base and then recover from incidents. But at some point, it's going to be really, really, really difficult. So I don't really play with Phoebe Chillax. I... Usually I play with Cassie, but there is also Randy Random, who is fun to play with. It is absolutely random. As the name says, you know, it could be five good events happening after each other, on top of each other even, 
Or it could be five bad ones. It could be two good ones, five bad ones. You don't know. Cassie follows rules. If you hit with a hard incident with a, I don't know, 50 people raid, for example, and they kill two of your colonists, there won't be a bad raid coming for a while because first of all, it was a big raid. But the real thing is that once you lose a colonist, the next raid will be more lenient. You lose wealth, but also you just lost someone. Randy doesn't care about that. So Randy is really, truly random. Could be good, could be bad. I don't know, but it's fun. It's fun to play. But for the original, the classic RimWorld experience, I recommend Cassandra Classic. Difficulty options. This is um, a, a kind of a controversy because they have been renamed. They are now Peaceful Community Builder Adventure Story Strive to Survive but Blood and Dust and losing is fun and then the new custom one just for setting up you know a new game and you might be new to RimWorld I recommend the community builder because that is for players who are new to this kind of game I, don't, I mean I don't think you can compare RimWorld to anything really Wolf Fortress yes because that's what it's you know partly based upon I don't know if you have a room if you if you have a room world, if you have a game that is similar to RimWorld just let me know I'd like to try it out. Adventure story, like if you if you think you're experienced with city builders, you're experienced with survival games like that, sure, go for it. I, I mean, you can change this on the fly whenever you want to. So, you know, if you if you want to check out Losing is Fun, previously Merciless, go ahead, right? You unlock this once you've played the the other difficulties a bit first. But once you unlock this, you can play with Losing is Fun. Yeah, just, you know. Just do it. And after the first raid, you you realize, oh wait, maybe maybe that's a bit too difficult for me. Let's do something else. You can change it whenever you want to in the settings. So for a new player to RimWorld, who wants a chill time, community builder, um, a new one who's looking for a challenge adventure story, but then you know you can change it whenever you want to. And there is reload any time mode versus commitment mode. In commitment mode, you only save the game when you exit it. There is no other way to save, which I do not recommend. First of all, because I like to play modded. And when you play modded and you play in commitment mode, something can go wrong. If, I don't know, the mod has an issue and the game crashes or it corrupts your save file, you can't reload, that's it. So if you're playing with mods, definitely reload anytime. If you need to prohibit yourself for reloading the game if anything bad happens, I mean, yes, but by all means, go for a commitment mode. But you can still say for yourself, I'm going to play in commitment mode, but have reload anytime on just to be safe that your save file won't get corrupted. Never happened to me, but still with mods, I just want to be careful. And there we go. Now we choose the seed. You can just, you know, click random. You can type whatever in, right? Tutorial, we can do that. Glow coverage is set to 30% by, by default, which is good. That's a good amount. Um, also, keep in mind that the higher it is, the longer it takes to generate your planet to generate, and then to reload the world every time you start the game. You can play around with the rainfall temperature population, but I, I rarely do. It's not really needed. And then we generate the planet. You can see I have the core here, the royalty DLC, and this is it. This is the 30% generated world. You can see the rest is just ocean. What we need to do here now. So what, what do you see? You see a different symbols on the map. Those are the different factions. You can go down here, click on factions, and then you see uh, this one. The pillar is always the empire. You have that with the royalty DLC. If, it, DLC. if you don't have the royalty DLC, that doesn't show up. But you have the other factions. Pirates are always hostile. You cannot make friends with them. Same with the Savage tribe. You have another uh, two more tribes, the Fierce one, the Gentle one, and then you have the Rough Outlander Union, the Civil Outlander Union. What I always do for a start, just because it's really nice. Obviously, you can just, I mean, you can just select random, but that's a bit, yeah. Random, obviously. What I like to do. So an easy start is Temperate Forest. That is also what the game recommends. It's quite nice. Yeah, if you want to go temperate forest, you do that. What I like to do is settle close to other towns that are not permanently hostile, settle close to a road and have a slight 
mountains there. So not really mountainous, but large hills would be quite nice. So you, you can click, first of all, you can click on the planet to see, you know, the, there's sea, there's sea coverage. If you click on terrain, that, that holds quite, quite nice information for you. Terrain, large hills, that's an important one. The stone types is what I look at because I always look for granite and marble. There's also sandstone, there is also slate and limestone. Granite is the toughest one. Marble is the most beautiful one. So I, I try to get those. Also keep in mind that you can't settle too close to another faction. Because that will um that will make them not like you. So we're not we're not gonna do that. I said temperate forest, right? So let's see. Here's temperate forest. What do we have here? Granite limestone marble. It is mountainous. It has caves as a special feature. Also, what you want to look at is the growing period here. 30 out of 60 days is quite all right, but obviously the, the longer the growing period is, the easier it will be for you to get food because then you don't have to hunt really. You can just grow all year long and that'd be okay. Well, that's all right. Let's, let's go for that. Mountainous, it's okay. Next. And now you can choose your characters. You can pick three out of eight and we'll see what i look for so you can just uh, you have these selected if you just want to go with a random star i mean you can absolutely do that uh those are left behind that means they have a relation to one of the others you can either pick those or you can uh, drag another one up from the bottom here if you prefer gains for example or you can just click the randomize button for any of these so you can do that what i look out for is health conditions I don't want a pawn with something permanent that's going to be annoying, right? So if they have, I don't know, a bad lung, for example, asthma, that can be replaced at some point. If they have, I don't know, if they're missing a leg, it can be replaced. It's okay, but at the start, you might want to look for something at least okay-ish, right? Drug addictions is quite annoying, especially in the beginning, so I, I would not go for that. You look at the age as well, because the older they are, the, the older they are, the more likely it is that they will develop dementia, um, and so on, artery blockages. What are they incapable of? Incapable of firefighting. If it's one pawn that's incapable of firefighting, it's all right. If it's all of them, it's a bit bad. And then the traits. Look at the traits. If you mouse over, you get a description of what they actually mean, what the modifier is. And then what you want in your colony is someone with a construction skill, someone with a cooking skill, and someone with a social skill. Medical is good. Everything else is, you know, you can do without. It would be good to have someone who's good at everything, but if you can only pick three people, it's going to be very difficult. So cooking, medical, construction. That's probably the most important ones. If your pawn doesn't have a good construction skill, you're just stuck with building stools for a while until you stools, walls, doors, that kind of thing to build up the construction skill. That teeny tiny flame here means that they have a passion for that skill, which means they're going to learn it faster. There is also a double flame, which I call double passion. So they learn it even faster. I'm just going to click randomize here. Look at that double passion for medical is good. Medical cooking. Construction 11, incapable of carrying animals, cooking. Oh, greedy is not good. Greedy is quite annoying, actually. But you know, it's it's all right. They're going to they're gonna be fine just for starting out. So we've got all these four people. All right, let's start. We're generating the map, diving in. Here we go. I know this tutorial was super basic, but I need to start somewhere, right? I plan to make more room tutorials. Is there anything specific you'd like to see? Something you'd like me to explain or show? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to see more of my content, I stream five days a week over on twitch.tv slash Feel free to check out my Twitter or Instagram to keep up to date. And if you'd like to support, don't forget to subscribe here to my YouTube channel. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.